Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere, and even earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, I feel like I've been having a lot more connection with my listeners through the Q&As and polls. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started. Hi everyone, I'm Amber Rose, the Religious Hippie, and welcome to A Catholic's Perspective. For those of you just finding this podcast, let me tell you a little about myself. I was born and raised a cradle Catholic until I fell away from the church for eight years. I just recently came back to the church and I could not be happier with where I am today. I am currently a junior in college and I'm studying graphic design. I am an ambassador for multiple amazing Catholic Christian companies and I love working with all of them. Now, some of you may already know me from my popular religious hippie social media channels, such as TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I have all kinds of Catholic content on there, so don't forget to go check those out. So the reason I wanted to start a podcast was so that I'd be able to have a longer format which people could listen to from wherever they are. I particularly wanted to address issues that young Catholics face today in the secular world, and I want to do that by providing information along with commentary and even a little of my own opinion. I can't lie, from time to time I might be discussing very controversial issues, and some will find my opinions unappealing. But I do this out of my faith and service to God. We must keep communicating with each other, respecting each other, and put each other on the path to sainthood. I think you'll enjoy the podcasts coming up, and I thank you for being here with me. Hey everybody, welcome back to my podcast. Today's episode is going to be a Q&A, so I have my producer Todd with me today. Welcome, Todd. Hi, Amber. Glad to be back. Yes, it's been a while since you've been on here, you know, like in a yeah. sense of just us doing a yeah. Q&A. I yeah. mean, I'm kind of always on here because I produce it and I'm in the background, but I haven't been on the show in a while. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah, I think the last one was the one we did with Father Dan and Confessions. So it's good to have you back. So Thank we you. have some questions from my followers that I got off of my Instagram page and all that fun stuff. So um. We always have tons of tons of questions for you. That come in. Oh, yes. So we're going to try and pick out the most relevant ones, the ones that are going to be the most helpful for you guys, but try to get to all of them at the same time. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You ready to get into it? I was born ready. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let me pick one out. Okay. What's your advice for someone who wants to love the Holy Mass, but finds it boring? Mm. You know, as somebody who has a hard time focusing during mass, I've never found it like, okay, when I was a kid, I found it boring, but I've always had a hard time focusing during mass. I would say if you're finding it boring, I feel like I need more context. Like what about it is boring. But if you go to a traditional Latin mass, you will not be bored because you'll be following along in the missile and you will do, be doing some responses and stuff. I feel like if you don't go to a traditional Latin mass, um, you can find one if you type in TLM finder into YouTube, uh, YouTube <laughs> Google, and uh, a TLM finder will pop up and you can find a traditional Latin mass near you. I think that's great. Um, if you find the mass boring, I would also suggest getting um, specific prayers to pray during mass. And if you are bored, like tell Jesus, just be like, Jesus, I'm bored, <laughs> you know, and just talk to Jesus during the mass. I think that can be really important too. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Good, good. The next one is why do you think even Catholic women get defensive with the idea of modesty? I think it's because society puts so much pressure on women to be like, 
you have to have your makeup done. You have to have your hair done. You constantly have to be dressed. You have to be in heels. You have to have shaved legs. Like you have to smell good. You have to have good hair. You have to have it, you know, done right. There's just so much pressure on women that I feel like modesty is one of those things that it's just kind of like the straw that breaks the camel's back where they're just like, we're doing so much already, you know, like get off us about what we wear. I also do think it comes from insecurity because it kind of is what society tells them they need to do in order to be accepted and loved. And so they feel like they have to wear and do those things in order to be accepted or to find love or, um, and I've, I've known multiple um, people who struggle with this, myself included. I would say, you know, society mainly. Um, we're sensitive. We're sensitive about it because it's pushed on us, and we don't find it like insecurity-wise. We don't know our own worth. Um, even some Catholic women don't know their own worth. You know, it takes a while to learn that, and so I feel like that's the basis for it, personally, from what I've experienced. Good. Good. This next question is your opinion on the Boy Scouts accepting girls. Oh, that's an old question. <laughs> that's happened a long time ago. I was in uh, I was in Venture Crew, which is like co-ed Boy Scouts. Um, basically, it's like ages 18 or 16 to 25, I believe, or 21. But um, I believe the reason that it happened was because Boy Scouts wasn't getting enough money. So that's like a whole other side of it. However, if it didn't have to do with money, um, I would just say that like the Girl Scouts kind of ruin everything (laughs) because the Girl Scouts already have their thing. And also there's this new um, there's this new Girl Scout group. It's an all girl. It's like Girl Scouts, but it's called um, it's like Adventure Girls or something or American Heritage Girls. There's a bunch of different ones where they do what the boy scouts do where they go camping and they make food on a fire and they do all these things um and so i think it's unreasonable for the the girl scouts to take over the boy scouts and be like well it's unfair because it's you know we make bracelets and they get to build fires like then go build a fire like nobody's stopping you um but i do believe that it happened due to uh money issues if i'm correct so that kind of throws a different twist into it i don't know do you know anything about that you were in the generic Girl Scouts, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't in Girl Scouts. Um, my sister was for a little bit. She got to be a brownie. And then I never really did it. Um, we were taken out of it because Girl Scouts is kind of like, I don't know, it's, it wasn't really accepted in the Catholic community for certain reasons. And um, so we did like tea parties with like a different kind of group and stuff. But then I did venturing, so generic girl scouts so yeah this basically. all just circles back to what i'm saying I, <laughs> yeah. never, I never made it into boy scouts i was a cub scout for like oh. two years and then but I, I didn't have a father that would participate so you know um, you can only get so far <laughs> <laughs> i mean People could you get wanna... a, could you get like a, a what is it like a scout master no well there is but the, you know it's still one of those things we encourage fathers to show up and do things and right you can't be the only kid there without a dad there <laughs> 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 that's true but who knows these days with uh, anything that's labeled boys or girls or men's or women's the lines are getting really blurred very quickly between them we don't know what a woman is how are we supposed to know what a man is i'm not a biologist <laughs> it's uh it's it's very odd to see what's just happening in sports so you can see why it would have i don't know if it's about money necessarily with the boy scouts uh because they've kind of uh, gotten through their whole bankruptcy and all that stuff that they were going through. Hmm. Um, So the Boy Scouts, I don't think are in any danger of going anywhere, but, you know, it kind of almost makes sense to, you know, merge Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts in a way. I do. I agree with that, but that's what like venturing is for when they become a certain age. Cause I feel like when they're really young, like boys need to be boys and girls need to be girls. And they have to do that in like separate. I mean, they can, of course, be in groups together. I don't, but when it comes to camping and stuff, they really shouldn't be like camping together and stuff like that's and like I did venturing and we did camping together. Like the boys had to build their own structures, but we were all older at that point. I'm so. not sure the ages on it. At one point, I thought the Boy Scouts went to like 21 years old, but I could be wrong. They do. On that. 
They do because you can um, you can get an Eagle Scout as long as you're under like oh no it's eighteen be, under eighteen be, because the the way I remember it was it was Cub Scouts Wee Belows and then Boy Scouts was the route you took yes and it was broken down by ages um but you know I I think what they figured you would do is when you hit twenty one you would join some other type of fraternal organization mm -hmm. when you left that so I you know. Yeah. figured that was probably the route that people took for a long period of time was just joining a fraternal organization after that. And I don't mean like a college one. I mean, one like a Optimus club or an American Legion or something like that. People, I know that. like some, some places have like Eagle scout clubs. And if you get an Eagle scout, you're more likely to get like advancements in certain job opportunities and right. stuff. Eagles, so, Eagles yeah. is another one. Yeah. Well, good. I don't know if we answered that question properly for you, Ryan, but... and gave our opinions. <laughs> Let's see. How about a man? In... This is probably almost exactly the same question. A man and woman's duty in the house and society. Oh, well, I mean, obviously we both have specific duties and that's why it's so important that we delegate those duties um, because while men and women are equal in the, in the eyes of God, we are equal, but in different ways. So like women are just as important in men, but in different areas of life because we, we, we give birth to humans, you know, like we raise humans, um, for society. And so that's a big chunk of like society is we, we raise kids for it. Um, I would say though, like when it comes to men are protectors and providers, they're meant to be protectors and providers outside of the home and women are meant to be protectors and providers inside of the home. That's not for everybody. That's just, I'm just stating my opinion and what I would like. Um, so it's been proven through a lot of statistics that women are happier when they're at home with their kids um, instead of working up towards a corporate job. That's just statistically proven that women are happier. Um, majority of women are happier that way. And so by protecting inside of the home, they protect their children from anything that might harm them TV wise, you know, anything they might see, do, they teach them incredible skills to be able to survive in the world. Um, they teach them schooling, just like a bunch of stuff that protects and provides children inside the home. They also cook and they clean and they help out that way, which is an amazing job and um, duty to do for your family. Men, they keep um, they basically provide and protect outside the home. So if there's an intruder, they're going to be the first ones to probably go down and protect their family. Um, if there's something outside that threatens their family, they're going to be the ones to go out and, you know, obviously, uh, defeat that threat, depending on what that is. Um, they provide by getting money so that the wife can go and, uh, make the house a home and that they can go and get groceries to make the food. So that's just personally, like my, like, little opinion on that um, but I know it's different for everybody it's not like a cookie cutter thing but that's just my take good good the next one is um is mac and cheese a fork or spoon operation okay this is an important question okay so if it shells it needs to be a spoon but if it's like those noodles with the holes in the middle like the long little noodle you have to get a fork and you have to put the noodle on the fork spikes and then you have to eat it like that it's a rule. I don't make the rules. You don't do that. You go to mac and cheese jail. I disagree entirely. As <gasps> usual. Go to mac and cheese jail, Todd. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a fork, but you scoop with the fork and don't stab with the fork. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. You loophole. Yay. I'll accept <laughs> that for now. I have to check the rule book on that. Just, uh, yeah. You get more that way. <laughs> yeah, but it's not as fun. And a spoon, you give up the spoon when you hit a certain age. Unless you're having soup or cereal, there's no excuse for a spoon to be used. I love spoons. That's an adult. Like, I remember that it was a big deal for me. It was giving up the spoon. I felt like childhood is behind me at this point because I'm <laughs> getting rid of the spoon. I'm a man now. Put my right. spoons away, mom. <laughs> it's a terrible habit to get your kids into that they're using so much with the spoon. And then you look like an idiot when you're an adult asking for a spoon at a restaurant, you know? I have this little teaspoon that I use for my mac and cheese and it's like really tiny and I love it. So you have a, you have a baby spoon. Have well, a, it's like a teaspoon. You have like a it's spork. 
No, but <laughs> it would be interesting because I'd call it Forky. But um, <laughs> I have like this little spoon that's meant for like tea. And it's like a little, like it's a tiny little cute spoon. And I love that spoon. It's my favorite spoon. I'm is not the, an adult yet. <laughs> is, the, is the spoon and fork one is one masculine and one feminine? And is a spork just androgynous and it's right there in the middle? I don't know. I'm not a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next question. Do you pray for certain and specific things in your life or do you just leave it to God's grace? Oh, um, both. I mean, it depends on what it is, but like, I will just talk to God. I don't necessarily pray for certain things um, because I do put it in God's hands, but I do ask for clarity in specific things. So if I want, um, let's say I want to get married, I'm not going to be like, God, you know, um, make me get married, you know, or something like that. I will be like, can you show me the way where, if this is your will, you will let me get married or something, something like that, if that makes sense. Um, and also like, I will ask for your saints intercessions because saints have specific things that they're, you know, cause they're patron saints. So there's certain things that they, um, can help you with. So like St. Anne is great for relationships. Um, St. Dimphna, she is amazing for mental health. Um, St. Joseph is great for fathers and trying to find a spouse uh, all those things. So there's specific saints that I ask for intercession. If there's a specific thing that I am looking for an answer for. Um, but for the most part, I, I mean, I do both. Good, good. Um, the next question is favorite book in the Bible. Mm, so yeah, I always fight about this one with myself because I always read like a new book of the Bible. I'm like, this one's my favorite. And then I, I go back and I reread one of my old favorites and I'm like, no, this one's my favorite. I would say probably Maccabees too. That was probably my favorite currently. Okay. The next question is uh, the importance of a life in poverty, especially in today's culture. Ooh. Okay. This is so interesting to me how the culture knows what it wants, but it doesn't know how to get it. So what I mean by that is that poverty to us as Christians means, you know, basically minimalistic living to somebody who, who is not Christian, you know, who's in society and super worldly, they do minimalistic living, which is in a way poverty living, um, or they meditate. We pray, you know, um, there's like all of these kind of back and forth things that it's like, oh, they're similar, but they're missing God, you know, in their stuff. Like they meditate, but they don't meditate, you know, on the mysteries of the rosary. Um, and they're giving their stuff away to be minimalistic, um, but they're not doing it for God. So they're missing that piece. And I think they know in their soul they're missing something, but they just don't know what it is. Whereas we, we do these things for God. And so poverty is really important because it teaches us self-control and um, it basically teaches us temperance, which is one of the uh, cardinal virtues. And so when we practice temperance, we know when we have enough of something, so we don't overdo it. And we know when we need to do more, when we underdo something. Um, and so when we are living in poverty, we don't have too much of something, but we have what we need in order to uh, fulfill what God needs for us. I don't know if you have thoughts on that. I have no thoughts on that. <laughs> Just nothing, nothing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, so those are my thoughts. Can non-Catholics use the rosary for prayer time? I am not Catholic, but would love to use it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's a great thing. And I love it when I hear like my Protestant brothers and sisters want to pray the rosary. I think that's amazing. And you definitely should. I also suggest the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Good. How do you deal with loneliness? I don't know. How do you? No, I'm just kidding. I just call my producer at 3 a.m. and I'm like, Todd. <laughs> that is actually true. <laughs> <laughs> call me out. No, I'm just I kidding. can verify that. <laughs> Approved by Todd. Yeah. Um, let me think. What do I do? Um, well, here's the thing is that I'm never really alone because I have three cats and three dogs. I also have a bunny, a snake, 10 chickens, two turtles, tons of fish. Um, so I'm never technically alone, but I have felt lonely. And one of the best cures for that, personally, I believe, is going to adoration. 
I have a 24 hour Eucharistic adoration chapel. Um, obviously I have a password to get in after a certain time because we don't want weirdos going in there. <laughs> but, um, if you can find a, an adoration chapel, I highly suggest that. Um, also I would suggest like if it's loneliness because you don't have friends, maybe get involved in a church group of some kind, uh, at your local parish, uh, see if you can get involved and ask them like, Hey, is there anything you guys need, you know, maybe a secretary job or something like that to get more involved in the church. Um, for me, I did that because I was just like, I felt like I wasn't doing enough and I wasn't meeting enough people. So I started teaching CC as or catechism class, basically for kids. Um, so I think like just getting out there is really important, you know, seeing if there's any young adult groups, seeing how you can help your parish. Um, and if you don't have any animals, buy a cat. They're cool. You know, that is a psychological condition. See, you get one cat and then you, you and your cat are like, we're so lonely, we should get another cat to keep us company. Don't and call me out, the, Todd. <laughs> the three of you. And then you're like, we should really get another cat and oh, we should get a turtle and we should get a snake and we should get, and then that's how your, your condition has evolved. Next there is, there is a reason a, a small pony will be next. <gasps> really? You think so? <laughs> Maybe a goat on the side. See, there is a reason why St. Francis is the patron saint of our house. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, how can I beat a vice I've been fighting for over eight, eight years and have not been able to get rid of? So that is called habitual sin. Uh, basically, habitual sin is when we have a habit of committing a sin continuously, whether we want to or not. When it becomes a habit, we no longer have control over that sin and it controls us. So in order to break habitual sins, um, these are basically the steps you have to take. The first one is to go to confession weekly. Confession is basically a mini exorcism and in some cases has been deemed more powerful than an exorcism. So it's important that you go to confession and you go regularly and you do the examination of conscience beforehand. If you guys want to look up on you, uh, I would say YouTube on Google, uh, type in bulldog Catholic uh, examination of conscience PDF. And it will bring you to a PDF, click on it, download it, print it out, whatever you want. This is the one that I use. And you guys see it in my YouTube videos all the time and do go through that before going to confession. Once you've done that, it's important to keep up with that and going to adoration, receiving the Eucharist constantly while being in the state of grace, of course. And then if that is not working, depending on what the habitual sin is, um, if it's sexual sin, obviously you need to get some web blockers on your phone. I would highly suggest you get an accountability partner. It could be a friend. It could be uh, your priest. It could be somebody have them set the password. Do not, cause there's a, there's going to be a password, you know? And so make sure that you are not the one who sets the password and you don't know what it is. That way, if you are in the temptation, you can't just bada bing, bada boom, put the password in and do, you know, um, make it harder for yourself. If you feel the temptation, you can start working out. And then um, I would also suggest figuring out what your triggers are. Everybody has a trigger. Um, so if it's alcoholism, sometimes going to a bar or a place where people are drinking, uh, that could be a big trigger for you. So avoid that. Um, if it's sexual sin, again, like just being alone in your bedroom, like go into a more public area or go work out. Um, if it's like gossiping, you know, maybe there's a specific person that makes you want to gossip, you know, or something. So it's important to recognize your triggers and try to remove yourself from that situation. So just sit down, figure out, okay, is this a, like, it's a habit. So what happens before that is always the same? Like, what's this, the habit that leads me to the habit kind of thing? Um, those would be my biggest tips. And then also just talk like if you can talk to your priest about it because they really have good advice um that might be able to help you good i suggest a 12-step program <laughs> <laughs> Todd, so so um what is it called uh militia like military 12-step well, program i will say this Get sober i agree with 90 percent of everything you said there <laughs> But I think some things can't be contained just within the church because. It, oh, no, I agree. I agree. I think that some at some point you might need therapy or you might need some 
something else. Yes, for sure. Um, but because he specifically said habitual, like a sin he's been struggling with, I, I kind of, my brain. Well, technically the question said vice. So when oh. I hear vice, I, uh, I specifically go to drugs or alcohol as a vice. Oh, gotcha. That's what I think of when I read that. I don't know who this person is, but, um, but I think certain things like 12 step groups are important. Yeah, I do agree you, with that. You can AA get a sponsor. You can have a group of people that can share similar problems. When you keep an issue contained just between yourself and a priest, mm -hmm. you're talking to someone who may not even have any experience in the vice you're dealing with, but at least in a 12 step group session, you might be able to hear how people were able to overcome what their demons were by their own personal experiences. So I, sometimes I think the group settings are good and 12 step there is, you know, there is a, a God purpose in that, you know, mm -hmm. you kind of have to go. No, yeah, it. I would agree with that. Yeah. I didn't even think about that side of it. Yeah. My there are a lot of other things that are lighter, like everything you said about pornography and everything you said about gossiping and a lot of the other stuff, just, it makes good sense. And, and, and even a person who's an alcoholic or a drug addict should still see the priest. Like you still yeah. have to keep your church life, but uh, I do think there's some advantages of 12 step. I think 12 steps, a good proven program to yeah. uh, get people through things. I've never been to 12 step myself. So just <laughs> disclaimer. Can they I get me through my experience. animal addiction? Um, there probably is a like animal holics anonymous. <laughs> you think? <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I couldn't go. I love my animals too much. I'm not getting any more, but. Uh -huh, sure. <laughs> That's what they all say. <laughs> let's see. Oh, there's only two questions left. So let's see what these okay. are. Um, how can I stay persistent as a teen who wants to be on the straight and narrow path? Um, this can be tricky. I would say, especially if you don't have friends who are, I don't actually know your situation, but to stay persistent, I would say is to stay dedicated and keep your routine and loyalty to God, um, which means going to mass on Sundays, you know, uh, going to confession regularly, um, going to adoration if you can. I'm not sure how old you are specifically because some high schoolers can drive some can't um but depending on your age like if you can do, drive and stuff i suggest like going to adoration and mass and all that regularly obviously if you are in walking distance that would be ideal too um or ask your parents i would also say like get into a group you know like if your church has a youth group of some kind get involved in that see if there's summer trips or camps or a ministry that you can help um, go with over the summer. I think all of that is great. Just really diving into your faith. And I know it can be scary because I always used to look for an invitation before I would join anything. And I'm like, well, how are they supposed to invite me if they don't even know I exist? <laughs> and so I started putting myself in those groups and being like, hey, you know, I'm new and I just want to know. And they were more than welcoming, you know, and they told me about certain things and um, that's kind of how I got integrated and I got more into my faith and I stayed persistent, you know, it's getting to know people and growing in my faith and helping others. Good. Very good. And stay away from drugs. Drugs are bad. Yeah. No <laughs> doing the drugs. <laughs> Remember those Let's pencils see. that they would give out where it's like, every time you sharpened it, like it would short, but it's like, don't do drugs. But then at the end, it said like, just drugs because they pencils. sharpened it. And how then, old yeah. are you? Well, remember they used to People have like still those... use pencils. <gasps> you don't. <laughs> oh, are you? I haven't like... used a pencil in years. Do you use those three D pens that use like the 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 wax to draw? I was. On... Uh, yeah, yeah. I I saw my uh, my nephew yesterday, and he asked me if I handwrite my books yeah. or whether I just type them. Oh my gosh! And I said, well, you know, it's funny because I used to handwrite screenplays, and then I would type them up. So I always had a whole screenplay that was all on yellow notepads yeah. with all my marks and you know, notes and things. I'd make it arrows drawn three pages over and stuff like that. And then eventually I just gave up on writing like that. And I just started typing because it saved a step. Now yeah. I miss out on having the original handwritten stuff, but <laughs> now I just type. So it's like a foreign concept to me to even think of using, like the only time I use anything to write with now is when I sign my name on a book. That's it. I'll use a Sharpie. Like, I don't even, I can't even remember the last time I used a pen or a pencil. Wow. I either make you're notes on, you're on a different level, hyping, hyping with my thumb or so like pencils is like, that's like high school for me. <laughs> how long ago was that? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is long, that's why I said, how old are you? Because, you know, a pencil really. 
I'm going to be 23. Actually, when this podcast comes out, I'll already be 23. I'm going to be 23 in like a couple days, April 8th. I'm not ready. I'm going to be a grandma. Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Todd. <laughs> so, yeah. So those pencils, I think I cut you off in the middle of your story. Those pencils that said, don't do drugs. Drugs are bad. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. They, they say, and then like every time you would sharpen them, they get shorter and shorter until it just said drugs. And then I was just like, well, because they would like do these like drug meetings in high school for these kids and being like, don't do drugs. But then the kids just did drugs anyways, because school sucks. <laughs> right. Okay. So hopefully we got a decent message to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Last question. Um, what do Catholic girls look for in Catholic men? I always love answering this one because my answer has never really changed from when I came back into my faith. I highly suggest everybody get the St. Joseph consecration book. Um, it can either be a book or a consecration, uh, either one. I highly suggest you do the consecration, but you can just read it as a book if you want. And this is what women should look for in a man. And this is what men should strive for in manhood. Um, women, you should look for a man who is a protector and provider, not just physically, but also spiritually. So he's going to lead you in the faith and he's going to take you to church and he's going to lead you guys in prayer and your kids in prayer. It is so important that fathers are in the faith because 70% of kids will leave the faith if their father is not active in it or going to church and stuff. Um, fathers have a huge influence on their children. So that is one thing women will look for is to see if they are in their faith. And I have met a lot of men who pretend to be in their faith, which is really annoying, where they will go to church just to find a woman. And then uh, once like the layers come off, they stop going to church. They skip it for sports. They're just like, well, I have the girl. So it, I don't have to try anymore. Don't do that. Like mm -mm. <laughs> you're not ready for a relationship. If you do that, um, if you have to fake your faith to get a girlfriend, there's probably a problem there. Um, so yeah, what women should look for in men is, and what most Catholic women look for in men is a protector provider, somebody who can be emotionally available, you know, somebody who's not just going to look at his phone whenever she's talking, you know, and just be like, yeah, whatever, honey. And women like men want somebody who's not going to like nag them a hundred times a day, you know, <laughs> like, but having those really heart to heart conversations can be important. So being emotionally available on both ends is very important too. Good. Good answer. Thank well, you. That's all we have for today. Yeah. There weren't that many questions. Usually I get a lot more than that, but honestly, it's probably smart. Otherwise we'd be here for like two hours and we would just be like talking about drugs and stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyone who wants to uh, leave a birthday message for Amber can do that Aww. at anchor.fm forward slash the religious hippie. You guys are too sweet. Or yeah, also hate mail can also go there. No, you can send that to Todd, my producer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he can filter that for me. <laughs> I warn you though, I'm not as religious as her. So you might not <laughs> like the response you get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's that's such a bad thing though, because like I can go to confession and stuff, you know. Like there's, so like I mean, you you do too. So I don't story of my life. I don't know. <laughs> All right, you want to wrap us up? Yes. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you, Todd, for joining me. As always, it is a pleasure. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically it. So I hope this answered some of your guys' questions, and I will talk to you guys in the next podcast. Bye. Do you have questions or comments about today's episode? Email me at thereligioushippie at gmail.com or leave a voice message at anchor.fm forward slash thereligioushippie. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please be sure to rate and review this episode. This podcast is produced by Todd Fisher and distributed by Metacortex Publishing. This podcast is copyright. Any previously trademarked or copyright content is used by permission. Information and opinions stated in this podcast should not be construed as medical advice. Please be sure to visit the official website for the International Association of Metatomics at metatomics.org or find us on social media for other unique content. <laughs>